Job chapter 1 verses 9 and 10 says, Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught or for nothing? In other words, there's a reason why he fears you. There's something in it for him. Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? The enemy is recognizing that God puts a wall up around his people and hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side. Three different things, him, his house, and all that he has on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. I want to speak to you tonight for just a few moments on this subject, the hedge, the hedge, and you may be seated. I truly believe that God is um, not exclusive with just what he did for Job, that God is still putting a hedge around his people. If there's ever been a time, this world that we live in today is so much uncertainty, uh, it appears that Russia and China is forming an alliance. Um, that is a formidable foe, those two nations uh, coming together um, economically, militarily. It, uh, it seems pretty obvious that uh, Putin and Russia is going to continue to advance on uh, countries that are around them, that ultimately, if other nations don't get involved, Ukraine will fall to Russia. And uh, Putin has made it clear that he wants to reestablish the old, Europe, the old uh, Soviet Union, bring those nations back under the rule of Russia, it'll probably only be a matter of time if he goes unchecked that China will move on Taiwan. And so we see this coming together of nations. And then you basically have uh, Russia and China united and Syria and some other nations. And then you have America and you have NATO, the European nations. And so what you see forming on the world stage is the, the makings of another World War III you see nations of the world are establishing boundaries and lines. And so we look around, we're still trying to come out of a pandemic. We see the world stage changing. Uh, we have runaway inflation. Uh, for the first time in my lifetime, you go into grocery stores and shelves are empty. This is a turbulent time that we are in, my friend. These are tumultuous times that we are in. But oh, I'm so thankful for this book called the Holy Bible. It is our strength, it is our hope, it is our guide, it is our hedge. What is a hedge? A hedge is a visible or invisible fence or uh, protection. It's not always something that you can visibly see. We understand it in the visible realm. When you have a hedge, you, you see it, you know, maybe in our world of just uh, having uh, landscaping, we think of it as a line of bushes, but a hedge has been used uh, in military battles whenever you look at uh, the advancement of uh, the Allied forces and the invasion of Normandy and D-Day and all that. There was a, uh, all these different hedgerows that they had that made it difficult uh, for their tanks to pass. And they had been put up a as a military blockade for that very purpose. And so uh, it's, it's, it's part of uh, a protection device. Uh, it's not just for some sort of landscaping beautification purposes. It's also uh, used to create uh, boundaries for your property, which is if you go back to that ancient time in Normandy, that's where it started. They would, they would line rocks up. We even saw that when we were in Haiti, that they would just go out and take land and they would just pile rocks up to mark the boundaries of their land. And so uh, a hedge uh, is something that is visible or invisible. Now, when we talk about it in terms of a spiritual hedge, we know that many times it's invisible. I will stop to say this. I do believe that it's visible many times. I believe that if you're part of a church, God's given you a visible hedge. You got brothers and sisters that can pray for you. Oh, hallelujah. You can stand arm to arm, shoulder to shoulder with brothers and sisters and know that you're not by yourself, that God has made you part of a body of believers that will stand with you in a turbulent time. But many times it's, it's invisible. It's just God's hand of protection. But when we think about it in terms of the, the spiritual significance of it, and we think of it in terms of what the natural definitions of it are, we see that it is to shut in or to 
uh, create restraint or to set a barrier around someone or something. And the scripture teaches us that, that God puts up hedges around those that fear him. For it is written, the angel of the Lord encamps. Everybody say encamps around about those uh, that fear God uh, and delivereth them. Now, here's what I love about that. Uh, I love that word in camp because that means uh, that the angel doesn't just fly by and do some sort of a fly-by protection or a fly-by blessing. He encamps. He takes up residence. You got angelic hosts, hallelujah, that are warriors in the spirit realm uh, that have set up camp around your home. Oh, the enemy don't want you to know this because if you don't know it, you won't ever call on help uh, from your hedge. Uh, but if you recognize uh, that you've got a hedge uh, of angelic protection, you'll call on the name of Jesus. Oh, I feel my help coming right now. I feel like God wants this church to know you're not alone. You're not by yourself. God is on your side. God before you who can be against you Psalm 34 and 7 Job was one of those whose lifestyle revealed his fear of God and I wanted to dissect this for just a moment because I want to know what Job did that caused him to be the recipient of this hedge we only need to look at the first verse of this book that bears his name to see why he had a hedge he lived inside of the hedge of God's kingdom. Job 1.1 1, 1 says, There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. And one that feared God and eschewed evil. There's the definition of it right there. You want a hedge? You got to be somebody that fears God. And you got to eschew evil. You can't just allow evil to run rampant through your home. You can't just allow evil to run rampant in your mind. You can't allow evil. You got to eschew it. You got to uh, you 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 got to refrain from. You got to run from it. You got to push it aside. You got to move away from it. Uh, but oh, you take a man or a woman uh, or even a young boy or a young girl, even these Bible quizzers that were on this platform, that's putting the word of God in their hearts uh, and in their minds. Uh, they're building up a hedge uh, they're saying we love God we fear the word of God uh, we take these principles not just in our mind but in our heart and in our spirit and we say no to evil and we say yes to God oh I want that hedge I want it Job was a righteous man one that feared God one that shunned or eschewed evil he was truly a good person he respected God. He refused to do wrong. He was faithful, honest, respectful, sincere. Daily he lived a reverent life unto the Lord his God. Oh, my friend, every day that you walk with God, you are storing up not just treasures, but you are storing up bricks in the wall that's putting a hedge around you and your property and your home and your family and your possessions and your stuff. This is what we know. We understand that that when you begin to say, I'm going to walk with God and you're faithful day to day. And you come to the house of God on a Sunday night and uh, you, you put yourself in an environment where the presence of God is going to be there in a very prevalent way. Oh, my friend, it's not wasted. Not one moment. Uh, oh, no, it's never wasted. You're putting yourself in a place where God can honor and begin to bless uh, and begin to restore and give you joy, unspeakable joy. Oh, hallelujah he puts something uh, around you uh, there is a protection uh, so that oh whenever a virus would try to take you out he runs up against the hedge uh, when a car accident would try to take you out he runs up against the hedge uh, when some danger would try to take you out in the middle of the night there's a God that says not yet not now not this child there's a hedge around them I thank God for the hedge of his power and the hedge of his protection. How is this hedge built? The hedge of righteousness. How is it built? As sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness 
unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Building up a spiritual hedge, there are several avenues by which a spiritual hedge can be built. As I was looking at this, I, I felt led to make these specific things that we're going to mention sort of the, the guide for us tonight as we begin to pray and worship the Lord. I believe there are five specific areas, at the least, I'm sure there's more, that builds up a hedge. And they can all be encompassed in prayer. Prayer is the most direct and most powerful force, both defensively and offensively. That's why your prayer life will be fought. But oh, my friends, if there's ever been a time we got to pray, we got to pray now. Prayer is not just for old established saints. Prayer is for young people. Prayer is for children. Prayer is for young couples. Prayer is for couples with children and grandchildren. Prayer is for every single individual. But the enemy will try to convince you that prayer is not exciting, that prayer is not enticing, that prayer is not entertaining. Oh, my friend, but you get your help in prayer. It's the most powerful, defensive, and offensive force. You begin to pray. Oh, I'm telling you right now, you begin to walk in the Spirit, and the Holy Ghost begins to use you and gives you insight and clarity of judgment and understanding standing and wisdom you got to have a prayer life to be victorious in this day and age praying specifically and being focused in certain areas it's like a laser beam it's like a guided missile when you pray specifically and it's focused on certain areas it amplifies the impact of the prayer as we begin to pray today, we're going to be looking at a few of these. But not only is it prayer, it's also the Word of God. That's why you can always pray the Word of God. Psalms 119.11, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Sometimes you've got to have a hedge to protect you from yourself. Sometimes you've got to put spiritual boundaries around yourself and say, I'm not going to go there, I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to watch that, I'm not going to listen to that. Come on, somebody got to build a hedge themselves. You build a hedge. Uh, David said, I made a covenant with my eye that I will set no evil thing before. You got to make a hedge around your eyes and your mind and say, I'm not going to allow anything. In. John 15, 7 says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Not only is the hedge prayer, and not only is it the word of God, but the hedge is the presence of the Lord. That's why I don't ever let anything rob you from the house of God, because it's in his presence that the hedge is built. I have been in services where I could just see walls being built around people's lives as they got in the altar and began to call out to God. Sometimes you come and you're so tired and weary. Uh, you've just been beat up through life and circumstances. Uh, but oh, you get in the presence of God. Uh, and you begin to say, oh, great is the Lord. Uh, and greatly to be praised. Uh, and you open up your heart and your spirit. And God begins to work uh, in a powerful way. Uh, you know what you're doing? Uh, you're, adding, uh, you're adding different layers and levels uh, to that hedge of protection. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden they hid themselves from the presence of God you know why because when you're not doing right the presence of God will convict you because the presence of God is there to protect you and to save you. And so when we're not right, we don't want to get in the presence of God. But you got to push through that. And you got to get in the presence of God. The presence of God will say, no, you not should be doing that. There's something better for you. It's the hedge of God's guidance and direction that brings us in fellowship with God. There's nothing like the presence of God. Oh, I want the presence of God. I want it in my home. I want it in my car. I want it on my job. I want it everywhere I go. I wonder right now if this audience would begin to shout and begin to praise God and say, Lord, send your presence. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 97, the hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The hills melted, those obstacles, those things that seem to be insurmountable. That are obstacles that you can't move forward. It's even described in Matthew 17 as speaking to the mountain. And it shall be removed. This verse refers to the hills melted like wax in the presence of God. I don't know what hills, I don't know what obstacles, what mountains uh, you may be facing. But I come to tell you that if you'll put them in the presence of God, they'll melt like hot wax. They can't stand under the hot glow of God's presence. Every situation, every attitude, every heartache, every spirit that would try to come against the house of God and the people of God. When God's people get together in one mind, in one accord, and begin to glorify God. Every hill's got to come down. They got to melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. Psalm 16 said, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. That's how we get into a place of building a hedge. It's being in the house of God. It's being in prayer. It's being in the word of God. It's living a righteous life. Then when we begin to feel this hedge come up around us, what is the hedge definitively? It is angelic protection. Psalms 34, 7, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth him. Psalms 91, 10, 11, and 12, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague Come nigh thy dwelling. I said, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall get his angels charge over thee. I hope you get a revelation that you're not just down here walking in shoe leather, dealing with this flesh. But there are spirits and angels that are around. Oh yeah, there's fallen angels, there's generals from the pits of hell that have been assigned to this area. But they are no match for the kingdom of God. I said they're no match for the kingdom of God. And I feel like in the Holy Ghost... That God wants to bring strongholds down. Strongholds that's been on your family. Strongholds that's been in your mind. Strongholds that's been in your family for generations in the past. God said, I'll break it. I'll destroy it. And I'll give you victory in the Holy Ghost. Give angels charge over thee. Keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Going to hold you in their hands. Psalm 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength. That excel in strength. We don't have some little floating, puffy, weak, sissified angel. Like you see in little church dramas, make-believe wings. You got angels that excel in strength. That are mighty. That are victorious. Woo, hallelujah. He said, I'm going to give angels charge over thee. They're going to bear you up in their hands so you don't even stub your toe on a stone. So you don't even stumble. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Ye ministers of... He 
You say, well, that's great. That means he takes care of the pastor. No, all of us are ministers. Minister means to serve. Oh, hallelujah. Every time you witness, every time you share the gospel, every time you reach out to help somebody, you're ministering to them. He said, uh, bless ye the Lord, all ye his host, his ministers uh, that do his pleasure. What's his pleasure? I'm going to tell you what. You get focused on lost souls. That is the pleasure and the heartbeat of God Almighty. You take a church that says, I'm going to be a, I don't care what my friends think. I'm going to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with everybody I know. I don't care if people want me or don't want me around their little social circles. I've been put on this earth to declare the glory and the greatness of God and to do his pleasure. So I'm going to tell everybody I know Jesus is good. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the hope of a lost and dying world. I got to hurry. I got two minutes. Bless the Lord. All his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul of his dominion. Don't you understand that you're serving a God that has dominion? Spiritually speaking, you can go to the Lord in prayer and he takes dominion over every situation. It's not only angelic protection that is the hedge, but it's also the blood of Jesus. That is the hedge. Exodus 12, 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood... And when I see the blood, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. I told a story a few years ago about something that happened in my house that I couldn't give an explanation for. I felt like there was a presence that was in my house, and, and I didn't know what it was. And I thought maybe it was just my imagination, but I tried to go back to sleep, and I couldn't. And, uh, and, and I just uh, sat up in a chair in my room and then I heard uh, doors slamming I thought maybe the kids were getting up that all the kids were in bed and I walked around through the house and checked this and that and couldn't figure out what it was and went back in my room and and sat down with my Bible and started uh, beginning to just uh, read the Word of God and I heard a door slam in one of the closets and I got up ran out there thought I had an intruder in the house and the door that I had already shut was now wide open and I looked all around the house. I couldn't figure out what it was. I, I came and talked about it to the church the following Sunday. And, and uh, the following week after that, uh, a man in our church uh, came and brought me a piece of wood that he had carved in there about the blood of Jesus protects this home. And the blood of Jesus uh, is a sign. To, he said, now I want you to hang this up, pastor, in your house. I said, yes, sir. And I started taking that piece of wood home to put up in the house and it dawned on me that when that door opened that you had shut and whatever it was ran out of there. Not that spirits have to have open doors. I understand that. But when I started reading the word of God, something said, I got to get out of here. That's been a number of years ago. We put that piece of wood up in the office and we said, we declare the blood of Jesus over this house. My wife and I went through the house and declared the blood of Jesus. I don't know what it was, but it ain't ever been back since. <laughs> Come on, Eastwood. You ought to declare the blood of Jesus. You ought to put it on the doorpost of your house. You ought to pray it over your child's bedroom. You ought to put it upon your marriage. You ought to put it in everything that you have. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Here it is again. And the plague, twice now we've seen this plague. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. I'm here to tell you that God will cover you under his blood. So that even the plagues of this world cannot touch you. And Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover and you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it they'd gather sticks together and make like a an old type of paintbrush 
a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that's in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that's in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. He's going to seal you in with the blood of Jesus. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in under your houses to smite you. Oh, my friend, it's not semantics. When you plead the blood of Jesus, by his stripes we are healed. The Bible said they overcame by the blood of Jesus. Oh, my friend, that blood was more than just the crucifixion. That was for you and I to apply it to every aspect of our lives. The name of Jesus is a hedge. I said the name of Jesus is a hedge. Come on, you oneness apostolic people that got a revelation of the name of Jesus. Don't set that aside. Don't let that weapon of warfare be non-existent in your arsenal. That said the name of Jesus is a hedge. Proverbs 18.10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. Oh, hallelujah. I'm thankful for the name of Jesus. You can be baptized in his name, but you can pray the name of Jesus. And in just a moment, we're going to do that. And we're going to just begin to pray the name of Jesus over every sickness, over every infirmity, over every spirit that would try to come against this body of believers. We're going to begin to pray the name of Jesus and God will protect this congregation and as I close and you are standing the hedge is an atmosphere of praise and worship which is where I want us to start tonight the hedge is an atmosphere of praise and worship Psalms 22 3 but thou art holy O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel Psalms 59, 16, but I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning. For thou hast been my defense. Woo, hallelujah. Yeah. Woo, man. It hit him and me at the same time. It's my defense. There's not a big difference between a hedge and a fence. He's my hedge. He's my defense. Refuge in the day of my trouble. Oh, hallelujah. Something about when God's people begin to worship him. God begins to build the hedge. As you begin to lift up the Lord, angels begin to form a hedge. Mm. You say, Pastor, why are you always encouraging us to worship the Lord? Because the more you worship, the more the hedge is built. I said, the more you worship, the defense forces get stronger. The more you worship, God begins to say, there's a place I can dwell. There's a place I can bless. Oh, East Wind, I'm calling on you now to come out from where you're standing. Begin to make your way down to this altar. Begin to go into a season of prayer by beginning with praise and worship. I want us to begin by lifting our voices. And I want us to begin to praise him. The singers are going to sing. But oh, we're not going to rely on the singers. We're going to use our voices right now. And we're going to begin to lift them up and begin to praise the Lord. Come on, I feel like God's going to do a special work tonight. That's it, use your voice. I know there is peace within your midst. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. There is hope and there is fear. I speak Jesus. 
Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we're going to use our voices. We're going to begin to use our own voices. And we're going to begin to worship the Lord. I want you to begin to think of everything that you can think of to be thankful for. Before we get into praying the blood of Jesus over specific needs, I want us to begin with just a time of thanksgiving. So I want us now to use our voices, which is what is most beautiful to God. And I want us to begin to just thank the Lord for everything you can think of. Come on, let's take a little time right now and just... Let's worship him for his mighty acts. Everything God's ever done. Hallelujah. I thank you for my family. I thank you for my health. Thank you for my job. Thank you for my church. Come on, everything you can think of. I give you thanks today. Hallelujah. I glorify you, Jesus. I praise you for your mighty acts. That's it, don't focus on what you've lost. Focus on what's left. Focus on what God still has in your presence, in your possession. Oh yes, Lord, you've been my keeper. 
You're the strong tower that we run to.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to pray the blood of Jesus about some very specific needs in our church. Some that have been um, long, long time uh, fights against sickness. And um, I feel like as a church, we need to just come together and begin to pray and plead the blood of Jesus. Uh, I want us to pray for Brother Steve Gailey. I want us to plead the blood of Jesus over his life, and his family, and Sister Judy and Sister Lisa, James, their, their boys. I want us to plead the blood of Jesus over that situation. And God would just touch him and heal him and raise up Brother Steve. I believe God can take that brain tumor out of there but doctors can't operate on God can operate on while there's breath we're going to keep believing and keep praying I want us to pray for sister Lizette Graver that God would touch her and heal her these are precious people uh, sister Lizette has always been there for everybody else an unbelievable caregiver who loves and is so diligent and faithful and has the biggest heart and she's in the fight of her life with her own health. And uh, I, we just, we got to plead the blood of Jesus. I believe the blood of Jesus can do more than chemo. Amen. The blood of Jesus can do more than anything man has. I'm thankful for every medicine, but oh, sometimes you got to just plead the blood of Jesus. I want us to pray for Brother George Hedges that God would touch him and heal his body. And I want us to pray for Sister Carol Saez, yes. uh, that God would heal and touch her body. Yes. And I want to pray for that young girl, is it Shai, Shivana? Did I say it right? Uh, Shivana, um, who's uh, over in Orlando. And uh, I was talking to uh, Brother Chris this morning, and uh, he said that her uh, kidneys are totally healed and have been 100% restored. And they're trying to release her from the hospital, but sometimes when they get one thing fixed, the medicine has a side effect and another thing goes up. And let's just pray that God would just give this young girl, Shivana, a complete recovery, a complete healing, that she'll be able to come home this week to her family. We believe God is able to do that. Amen. God can touch and deliver to the uttermost. And I want us to just begin to plead the blood of Jesus. I know there are other needs and other situations, and I don't uh, have all these written down. It's just one the ones I just felt in my mind and in my spirit. Uh, Sister Carol Saez, who uh, has had, had those strokes that have disabled her, and, and she's in a 24-hour care facility. But all my life, God has been faithful and just about all my life Carol has been loving and giving and serving people and I want us to pray that God would just come down and wrap his big arms of love around her right where she's at if you have situations right now can we just take some time and, and just begin to plead the blood of Jesus right now over these situations come on church we know how to pray warfare prayer come on let's pray against this spirit of infirmity Come against it right now in the name of Jesus. That's it. Go to war with your prayer right now. Oh God, we need a breakthrough. We need a healing in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray some warfare prayers right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah, Lord, Lord God, the strength and 
sustainer, you are healer, Lord God. Lord Jesus, we cry out to you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
darkness into glorious light. Thank you, Lord, for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for that hedge, Lord, that when we call upon the name of Jesus, and we apply that blood to our lives, Lord. You protect us, Lord. You keep us. You heal our bodies, Lord. We come against every spirit of infirmity, Lord, with the blood of Jesus Christ. We come against every crisis, Lord, with the blood of Jesus Christ. I'll tell you what I feel that we ought to do here tonight uh, as we come to the close of this time with the Lord which I think is so precious I'd like for us to just take a few moments and just uh, pray the word of God I if, if you know verses or promises that are in the word of God that have significance to you I wonder if you would just pray and pray the word and begin to speak the word of God over your life or over every situation and whatever you're at right now in terms of what you may be individually facing if you will just begin to speak the word of God I believe that hedge will grow even stronger and even higher and we take just a moment now and just begin to pray the word of God would you do that just begin to pray the word of God Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Oh, yes, that's it. Just pray the word. You are my hope. You are my strength, Lord. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Hallelujah. I speak the word. I speak the word. Hallelujah. The word of God, it is my strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I speak the word of God, hallelujah. I speak the word of God, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. We declare the word of God in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue must confess, hallelujah. Everything falls, Lord, before you, hallelujah. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But the word of God shall stand forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We speak the word, Lord. We speak the word of God. Hallelujah. We speak your word in every situation. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's your word that keeps us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the word of God that makes a difference. Hallelujah. We declare your word. We declare your word. In the name of Jesus. You abide in me. Hallelujah. And my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will and it shall be done. Hallelujah unto you. Hallelujah. We declare the word of God. Hallelujah. We declare the word of God. We're thankful for the angelic host that we feel in this house tonight, God. We thank you, Lord, that you put a hedge of protection about us. You protect our homes and our families. You protect our automobiles, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Oh, there's victory in the power of God. Woo, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you feel like that hedge of protection has been built around this church, around our homes? Oh, thank you, Lord. 